Good afternoon. You're watching us here on Your Stocks. This is a show where we answer all your stocks and investment-related queries. I'm Mangla Malu. It's been a decent afternoon if you're looking at stocks beyond the index. But if you're just looking at the index, well, it has absolutely been virtually unmoved. It's just moving within 10 to 15 points of that 19,800 mark. The Nifty Bank, which is outperforming today, is being undone. The goodness of that for the index is being undone by the IT index, which is currently at the low point of trade. But in terms of individual stocks, a bunch of them are doing extremely well. Uh, the ones that belong to the Adani group are uh, spiking as we speak. Adani Enterprises, for instance, is at the high point of trade. The Nifty IT index at the low point, as it is at uh, the uh, as on your screens. In the FNO pack, we have big moves coming in on names like BHEL, which is one of the biggest moves that we've seen in the last uh, you know many years on BHEL. It's at the highest level that we've seen on that stock since 2015. GMR Airports is piling on some gains as well, with gains of almost 5% as we um, you know, look at the chart and most of the gains coming by in just the last few minutes odd. A big spiker in today's trading session is Hindustan Aeronautics as well. And among the ones which are losing uh, include the likes of m and Financial at the low point of trade, Manapuram Finance lower and HPCL again is at the low point of trade. But let's talk about your queries and your investment portfolio. To help us understand your queries and give you guidance on that, we have Asta Jain, who's the research analyst, and we have Kush Bura, who's the founder at kushbura.com, joining in as well. Asta Kush, thank you for joining in. Let's talk about the first query that has come in from Tamil Nadu. Basi Reddy writes to us, holds about 200 shares of Aurobindo Pharma at about 978 rupees a piece, wants to know whether to hold or sell, making about 10,000 rupees on his investment. Asta, your thoughts on Aurobindo Pharma? Uh, hi, good afternoon. So talking about Oro Pharma, I think it's the uh, right time to hold the stock because the stock is poised for more returns going ahead, maybe 1180 or 1200 levels. So which, uh, these are the targets which we are giving. Uh, basically, the company has performed strongly on the financial front if the uh, results can be seen on in the quarter gone by. And apart from that, their China plant has already been installed. They are coming out with the new launches. So all these things will ref uh, definitely help the company in posting strong performance. And in fact, G Rev Limit is also there for the company to show strong performance going ahead. So all these factors are working in favor of company and that's why we are quite positive on the prospects of the company. Uh, recommending a hold on the stock for the possible price target of around 1180 or 1200 levels. All right, 20% further upside from uh, current levels is what is expected on Aurobindo Pharma. Hope that answers your question. Uh, the stock has seen a big rally of almost 70, 71 odd percent in the last six months itself. The next one comes in... Uh, Sarvana Kumar Sambasivam writes to us from Kanchipuram. He holds about 3,000 shares of Bandhan Bank. He bought it at around 212 odd rupees. Wants to know how long he should hold it. Kush, uh, you know, the stock has done virtually nothing in the last one year, if you just look at it from a point-to-point -point basis. But in that last one year, it, we've seen a jump of almost 20% from current levels. And we've also seen a decline of around 17-18% from current levels. So... It's been in this big range, volatile, but eventually not much moves to show for in terms of gains. What do you think our viewers should do here? Uh, and Mangalam, precisely for uh, that reason, you know, my uh, suggestion here would be exit because it's not just the last uh, year or so. In fact, if you look at uh, you know, the listing time onwards, the stock's actually not done well. In fact, it's, uh, you know, there, there's been a bit of a wealth of destruction, you know, in this. Now, given the fact that there are a lot of other NBFCs and banks, uh, you know, which have been doing well, which have a lot of, uh, you know, potential and momentum both going for them, uh, my suggestion would be to switch to one of those. But Bandhan Bank is a very clear, you know, exit from my side. The good thing is that, uh, you know, the gentleman, uh, his investment is cost to cost. You know, there might be some opportunity loss. But there isn't, you know, actually some monetary loss here. So an exit is uh, my suggestion at the current level. That would be, um, you know, a valid suggestion out there. Just looking at the last one-year chart uh, uh, of Bandhan Bank, as you can see, you know, there have been big peaks, big troughs, and eventually not much in terms of moves to show for by the end of this year. Rasta, your thoughts on Bandhan Bank? So uh, definitely even I would like to recommend that uh, one can really exit from this counter because see the management has not turned on the guidance which they have given for their deposits as well as advances because uh, they have given the growth guidance of uh, around 20% in their advances which they really didn't show in the uh, quarter two of FY20. 
uh, for and what we know that streets don't like uh, such kind of disappointment in the guidance and definitely the uh, asset quality is also not at par right now although going ahead again the management is guiding up of NIMS uh, of around 7 to 7.5 percent but looking after the past performance it is not uh, really infusing the optimism at current levels so even I would recommend to exit from this counter because uh, right. in fact uh, the Yes, because he's uh, standing at the uh, you know cost price only, so there is no harm in exiting. All right, you're standing at the cost price, no harm in exiting while you are not making any losses here. Makes sense. Uh, but meanwhile, a bunch of other stocks also from the broader markets are spiking. LIC, for instance, is now at a 10% up move, one of the biggest up moves that we've seen on the stock on a daily basis ever since its listing. But remember, it's been a big underperformer in the insurance space itself, and a lot of these public sector financials doing extremely well. But speaking about financials, Edelweiss Financials too, for the last few trading sessions has been a buzz, but right now is uh, sitting with big, big gains. Edelweiss is up 12 odd percent. Spencer Retail from uh, the broader markets also doing well. A large part of these cash stocks doing well could also be perhaps low participation from the institutions, which would mean that a bunch of uh, HNIs, etc., individuals could, uh, you know, be active in a lot of these cash stocks. And the lack of institutional participation would mean that these impact costs would be a lot higher too. The next query, extremely interesting one. This one comes in, uh, you know, Nimish Karlikar, uh, Nirlikar writes to us from Mumbai, holds about 1,000 shares of Ashok Leyland at 150-odd rupees. He wants to know whether he can hold the stock for another two years or get out, move to a more profitable stock. It's um, interesting largely because he has made some money. The question is whether we see demand for all the CVs return or not. Kush, um, your thoughts on the way Ashok Leyland looks right now and is placed? Well, you know, for sure, uh, you know, a hold on this one. In fact, you know, we'll not be surprised to see 200 plus kind of levels on this, especially given the fact that, you know, his time horizon is uh, two years, you know, uh, 200 to 20 also is, you know, very easily achievable on this one. It's not one of those fancy stocks, you know, like the uh, Marutis or Hero Motors of the world, but surely and steadily, you know, it's formed a base and it's now, uh, you know, seen a very steady recovery. So uh, with the kind of time horizon and with the kind of setup that we are seeing from, you know, a middle, a medium to a long-term perspective, a hold on Ashok Leyland. Asta, would you agree with Kush or maybe are there better opportunities in the autos and two-wheeler space according to you? I think uh, even uh, I think uh, he should hold on this uh, counter rather than looking at others because this stock is again poised for strong returns going ahead. Uh, first of all, want to give the price target of around 190 to 210 at the initial level. So whatever performance they have shown in the financials was good. In fact, they have launched uh, new products in the tractor sector, so in other uh, two-wheeler segments also. So I think that is really helping the company in showing strong performance, resilient performance by the uh, management. And in fact, they are expecting strong margins going ahead. So I think uh, Ashok Leyland is looking a better choice rather than other players because they have already shown strong run-up. But here the run-up is still to go. So one should stay invested in the counter with a price target of 190 to 210 at the initial levels. All right, before we move on to the next query, just pull up the intraday chart of Honasa Consumer. The brand owner of Mama Earth has been on a tear this week itself. It's up nearly 40-odd percent, but from the highs, the stock has seen a correction of almost 6 or 7 percent, now sitting with gains of just about 8 percent. It's interesting that we call a gain of 8 percent just about, but that's uh, because in the morning it was up by around 15 percent after having seen a 20 percent up move in yesterday's trading session as well. So a little bit of profit taking towards the end of uh, trade as people, you know, close their books for a three-day extended weekend. Remember, the stock has been rallying on account of a couple of factors, positive brokerage uh, notes coming in from Jefferies, the results that the company posted uh, yes, day before yesterday post markets as well. But uh, also a factor at play could be the low float, which is currently available in the market. Only 25% of the company's equity is available for trade. So moves on either side could be exaggerated. So the ones who have been making gains, perhaps ahead of the long weekend, are looking to skim off some of those profits. The stock, mind you, still sitting with a gain of 8% and 40% for this week. But from the highs, it has corrected about 6%. Let's move on to this query coming in from Tamil Nadu. As Jay Kumar writes, he has about a lakh 25,000 shares of Suze Lawn. He bought it at 8 rupees 65 paise. Also has about a lakh shares of JP Power. Um, this is the interesting query that I was talking about. JP Power, he bought it around 10 rupees 20 paise, sitting on a profit of around 3 lakh 25,000. But uh, Suze Lawn, 
where he has 125,000 shares. He bought it at 865, 8 rupees 65 paise. The stock has seen a big, big rally, and his gains on Suzlon have been 40 lakh rupees. Kush, Suzlon, and JP Power. Usually, these stocks were earlier not spoken of very highly in terms of quality. But on Suzlon, there has been a bunch of things that have changed, and the street believes that there is a turnaround. So, which is why we've seen the stock move almost four times, five times from his buying price and also from the lows and, uh, you know, the move, the prices that we saw, say, sometime 12 to uh, 18 months ago. Your thoughts on what he should be doing on Sue's Lawn and JP Power too. If, if just the last one or two months chart comes up for you on the screen, you would see it's a big, big mover on that counter too. So now that he's made big money on Sue's Lawn, the street believes there's a turnaround. Should he cash out or should he ride the further turnaround as well? And on JP Power as well, He's on the right side. He's got a decent amount of stock as well. Should he book the profits while they're available or maybe wait for a turnaround story in this counter too? So, uh, Mangalam, first up, you know, uh, kudos to him for identifying these stocks, for, uh, you know, investing uh, in the way, in the manner in which he's invested and uh, best of all, holding on to these, uh, you know, especially Sue's loan uh, for, you know, multifold returns. Now, given, uh, you know, also, you know, what helped the cause was Sue's loan was at about eight rupees, you know, as early as, you know, May, mid May. And that's when the, you know, up move started. So actually the stock's gone five times from, uh, you know, mid May just until about now. So six months and the stock's actually, you know, run up more than five times. I can understand if he's a little concerned that, you know, the stock is off, let's say, you know, 15, 20% from the top. But you know, just let's just put things in perspective. Five times, you know, up move and just a 20% dip. That's that's perhaps, uh, you know, not, not a big, uh, you know, dip anyway. Now, if I look at the overall setup, it's still very encouraging. But uh, how we typically suggest, you know, uh, one should play these uh, momentum plays is to have a trailing stop loss. Both Suzlon and JP Power still look good on the charts. Let's not forget that, you know, these stocks have been consolidating when the markets actually sort of dipped. So that is also a healthy sign going for them. What I would suggest is for JP Power, have a trailing stop loss close to about 12 rupees. So if the stock drops to that point and he exits, he'll still be in a handsome profit. And as far as Suzlon goes, very similar strategy. The recent low that the stock made was 35.50. So I think that's uh, that's a good uh, you know test. In fact, 35, 35.50 is a support zone for the stock anyway. So I would have my uh, you know trailing stop loss there. The kind of breather that the stock has taken is actually healthy. I wouldn't be surprised to see, uh, you know, levels of 45 and 48 also on Suzlon in, you know, in the uh, coming months. So hold would be the advice, but I have a trailing stop loss. And once again, you know, congratulations on the fantastic investment. All right. Fantastic investment indeed. Uh, that's, uh, you know, it, it's post facto. If uh, it makes money, then it turns out to be a fantastic investment. But for names like these, which are known for high beta sort of moves, uh, trailing stop loss is, uh, uh, you know, a fairly sound strategy that you've pointed out, Kush, uh, just pull up the chart of JP Power once again. Last three months, it's been a 75% up move. If you extend it, even the last 12 months, it's been 137%. But that takes into account mostly the last three-month chart. So JP Power today, of course, down about 2 odd percent. But that pales in comparison with the move that we've seen in the last three months, 75%. And if you cut that shorter, you know, from uh, August itself, from uh, rather from October itself, the move which started has taken the stock higher by 75, 76%. Take a short break, come back, answer more queries on the other side. Welcome back. You're watching us here on Your Stocks, the show where we answer all your stocks and investment-related queries. So let's jump right into that. We have Manoj, uh, rather, we have Manoj Sinha, who's written to us from Gurgaon. And, of course, the experts are Kush and Asta. Holds 20 shares of Power Grid. He bought it at 100 rupees. Uh, wants to know whether to remain invested or exit. Asta, your thoughts? 
uh, I would like to recommend to hold the stock for the price target of around 220 to 225 odd levels. So if we talk about this counter, definitely it is a monopoly in the interstate transmission system. Along with that, the government has, a, I mean, a strong uh, plans, CAPEX plans also of this counter. So right. it will again the company in uh, showing strong performance going ahead. So we think Power Grid is well placed right now to show strong performance going ahead also on the back of uh, strong numbers. So I think uh, one can hold the stock with a price target of 220 to 225. All right, hold Power Grid. The next one comes in from Pune. Santosh Shah writes to us, holds about 500 shares of Excide Industries. Uh, for the last seven years, he's uh, bought it at around 217 odd rupees, sitting on a profit of around 32,000 rupees. Um, your thoughts, Kush, on Excide? Well, the momentum is certainly there. Uh, a very clear advice would be hold the stock is actually at a multi-year high level, well placed. You know, volumes have also picked up. But I think for a target of 320, he can continue to hold on to Excite Industries. SD Ramesh writes to us from New Delhi as well. Holds about thousand shares of Hudco. He bought it at around 73 odd rupees, and also holds 1500 shares of Adani Wilmar. He's making profits in Hudco holding. He bought the Adani Wilmar shares at around 4.30, where he's uh, incurring a loss of almost 1.7 lakh odd rupees. Um, your thoughts, uh, Asta, on Hudko and Adani Wilman, if you track these counters? Uh, sorry, I don't track Hudko, so I cannot comment on that. But he is talking about Adani Wilmer. I think one can stay invested because of late we have seen some sort of uh, uh, strong momentum. So I think uh, rather than booking losses at the present point of a time, it's a better strategy to hold the stock for further upside. So I recommend hold for the Adani Wilmer. But for Hudko, we don't track, so I cannot comment on that. All right, so let's go across to Kush for Hudko. Kush, do you track Hudko? I do. In fact, it has been a recommendation as a part of our advisory service and it's actually hit, uh, you know, uh, the target. So uh, quite happy on this one. The stocks formed a very strong base. If you see at about 75, 77 kind of levels and on the weekly charts, if you see it's on the up move, uh, volumes have also been, you know, fairly encouraging. You know, there's been an uptick. So we suggest a hold on Hudko. If the view is, uh, you know, medium term, then 92 and 99 are the targets that we're looking at. And the base of 75 is what right. it will act as my stop loss now. Okay, then with that, we'll uh, wrap up with the final query that we have from New Delhi. Karuna Jain writes to us. She holds about 25 shares of Indian Oil Corporation at 80 odd rupees. Wanted to know whether she, she should hold or sell. Asta, all the oil refiners have been doing well over the last few trading sessions. The last couple of months have been big for these uh, share, share price moves. In that, IOC has been an underperformer. Your thoughts? Uh, but I think going ahead, it will perform uh, strongly. So first of all, hold with a price target of around 115 to 120 odd levels. Uh, because I think going ahead, the refining margin segment will really help the company in posting strong numbers. And numbers, we always look uh, for uh, giving rating to any stock. And that's why we are positive on this counter. So I recommend hold. And price target is around 115 to 120. Kush, uh, Asta, thank you so much for joining in, helping all our viewers with their investment and traded-related queries. We wrap up on this show with the news that the market is absolutely flat around that 19,800. Do remember to email us your queries. We'll address them with our experts. Stay tuned. Closing bell takes you through the last hour of trading.